So today is the last meta meditation that I'm going to be leading for at least four months. Um, I'm putting a newsletter out soon with the next dates on it because, of course, I want to reconnect to you immediately when I'm back. But um, I will be taking some time for personal retreat. So I'm feeling extremely glad and grateful. Excuse me, in my heart. And uh, feeling like rejoicing today and just what we've managed to uh, develop and generate as a community. It's a very beautiful thing. So you're all part of that, even if you've only just arrived, because it's lovely to see new people checking in. And, uh, and the meta, I think, has been a really important part of bringing a community together from scratch and a community who relate to each other kindly and wisely with skillful speech and skillful thoughts as well. Uh, much of the path starts in the mind, if not the whole of it. And the Buddha said that karma indeed is intention. So even having thoughts and intentions of loving kindness does incline the mind towards those feelings and attitudes and um, skillful ways of speech, beautiful gestures we do for each other, generous deeds, generous acts. So um, this is what we live on as monastics. Without generosity, without goodness and kindness in this world, we would literally go hungry. We would starve. You know, you wouldn't even have anything to wear. These robes are given by donors who've gone out of their way to raise the funds and, you know, get the right size, sometimes stitch from scratch. Um, <clears throat> you know, the food that we eat, everything I look at in the house, whether it's the paint on the walls or it's the cupboards themselves or a broom, Everything's been offered out of the kindness of someone who's not necessarily wealthy, you know, at least materially, but who know that this is contributing to the greater good, something much bigger than ourselves. And uh, interestingly, you know, just having a couple of you stay with me recently um, and ask about your practice, I realized that, gosh, you're making meta practice a really central part or at least important part of your daily practice. And perhaps that's why there's so much goodwill among us and um, to the extent that I'm receiving it too. So uh, <laughs> I'm just seeing this lovely message as well, all these joyful, smiley, spiritual friends. It's just lovely words, isn't it, to uplift our hearts. So um, without further ado, let's get into some meditation. And um, as usual with these uh, sessions, the instructions are more like suggestions, invitations to uh, incline your mind in a particular way. Um, generally, the people who come here, I guess, for most of you are not in retreat centers or monasteries, and so you may be having busy lives, you may be quite tired. So I give quite a bit of instruction just to help you feel held. But if that's too much and you just want to relax your mind, you can just let it drift off the edges. Um, it's not something you have to get right. So we can begin by just establishing our posture as comfortably as we possibly can. It might mean taking a sip of water, adjusting your seating position, especially your buttocks, your legs, having a stretch. Maybe just asking yourself before you do settle on a posture if this is really the right one for you now. Sometimes we uh, push our bodies around, make them sit cross-legged when they'd rather have a chair or maybe vice versa. You might benefit from a little more alertness. By being cross-legged or stretching your back. You're giving yourself the time to just land. And recognizing that this time, this one hour, is a gift to yourself or yourself to use in a way that's beneficial for you, 
not for anyone else. Sometimes we're in a new place, like myself at my parents' house today. So it takes a little bit of time to shift modes. In a place where not so much meditation happens every day. Just really giving yourself permission Calm right down. And inviting a sense of this community in. People across the world connected together today to practice metta. What an extraordinary act extraordinarily beautiful thing that is. So just sensing, if you can, the support of community. If you're in a monastery in Thailand, that's already there. This is connecting you to an even wider sense of community. It's almost condensed in one place to be right there with you in your room or under the sky. And just letting your body relax. Feeling the weight of your body on the ground or the chair. Perhaps gently spreading your awareness through each and every part. Maybe beginning with the feet today. Spreading up through the ankles and the shins, the knees. Smiling into these bodily parts with an attitude of friendship and warmth, respect. Adjusting any limbs, maybe knees that are bent too tightly or are taking too much pressure or weight so they know that you care. Sensing into your thighs, your buttocks, allowing all those muscles to relax, supported by the ground or the chair, the earth. Sensing your belly, perhaps expanding, contracting, the in and out breath. Letting your belly just hang.
and moving up through your whole torso, through the back. making any adjustments you need to make. <clears throat> so you can feel the strength of the spine and allow all those muscles, tendons, ligaments to relax. Giving your organs more space. Healing into the belly, chest, rib cage, and all the organs inside, whatever sensation you experience, no need to locate any particular organ, but just getting into the feeling part of the mind. Just listening. To whatever your body wants to express. And imbuing your body with care. Sensing your shoulders and any sensations or feelings there. It helps to just roll them a little bit back. We carry so much tension in our shoulders. Perhaps giving your neck a stretch. And then letting them go, letting them be. Perhaps adjusting your arms and your hands. So that all that tension can drain away. Down to your fingertips. And sensing your head, your face, jaw, cheeks, eyes, eyelids, and brow. Noticing those little tensions we carry in our face. Part of us that greets the world. and letting everything relax. And feeling the top of the head, the scalp, Perhaps the temperature, if you're bored like me. <laughs> and the space around you, around your body, above you and to every side. Held by the ground below. And perhaps beginning this metta meditation by just wishing yourself well. Becoming aware of any sensation that's fairly pleasant or neutral 
perhaps a sense of your body as a whole. Maybe noticing lightness or tingling. And connecting with your deepest wish for yourself. Regarding yourself with the kindly eyes of a spiritual friend. The way a teacher or a guide, a best friend or even a Buddha would regard you. just with kindness and care. And if it helps, you can pick up a couple of phrases, such as, may I be happy, fully content, May I be healthy. May suffering end. Whatever resonates for you. Just offer these phrases to yourself as a gift. Pausing between each phrase to let the resonance, the meaning of those phrases sink in and soften the heart. Just being very gentle with yourself, no force or demand. And enjoying receiving your own generosity and love.
and allowing whatever emotions or feelings arise, neither resisting the joy, the lightness, the peace, nor rejecting feelings of irritation perhaps or tension, even anger, it all belongs in this field of loving kindness. So just be kind to your mind. And if you wish to continue imbuing your own body and mind with thoughts, feelings of love and kindness, that's fine. Or if you wish to spread these feelings and thoughts of metta, then let's begin to do that by bringing to mind a spiritual friend perhaps in your community, wherever you are, or in the Zoom community. The Anukampa community, to which many of us are playing a very beautiful part. Perhaps one person or many people come to mind. Connecting with what it means to have a spiritual friend, a spiritual community of like-minded people. Trying their best to incline to the Dhamma, to goodness, to love and to truth. Perhaps Feelings of gratitude may arise. And just allowing loving kindness to spread to all those you consider spiritual friends, supporting your practice even for the, just this hour, even those you don't really know. May they be happy and well. If you find someone comes to mind whom it's easy to develop loving kindness towards, then stay with them for a while. Allowing the heart to remain open to anyone else who may come to mind. 
Letting metta spread as far as it goes, as far as is natural right now. Perhaps remembering times that you've shared with your spiritual friends, times we've been together performing good, perhaps meditating, doing little services for one another, offering flowers, writing a beautiful card, whatever it is. Bringing up these happy perceptions of times of harmony in community or with a spiritual friend. And perhaps connecting to some of the qualities you experience in others around you, beautiful qualities you can really admire. Even if you find somebody difficult, recognizing their intention to grow. Allowing yourself to really rest and bask in the goodness around you. In the company of spiritual friends. Knowing you're not alone. A part of something much bigger than any of us can imagine. You are both supported and supportive to others on this path. What a remarkable thing that is.
don't need to try so hard. I don't need to be so much. Or held, just held by the power of community and all those who walk the path alongside us or those who've walked it before us. Those who are our spiritual guides. who were once just like us. And imagining this spiritual community like a huge force for good, a huge network spread around this world. Giving support and guidance, kindness, respect to all beings everywhere. From Malaysia to Thailand, across Europe, all the way through the UK and across the seas to India, sorry, America, India's in the middle, <laughs> all around this globe, where people are practicing to purify their minds, may the power of the practice of the Dhamma be a refuge to all beings everywhere. Those who are suffering, those who are scared, those in pain, those who are lost and confused. May all beings experience peace, safety, and have a true friend
And may all animals, insects and birds also be protected by the power of our combined loving kindness spread throughout this world, this planet Earth. May they too be happy and well, safe and at ease. All beings in the Deva realm, heavenly beings, perhaps do look out for us. May they all be happy, peaceful, and grow in Dhamma. May they find absolute peace. All beings in the ghost realms, the lower realms, those in great pain, may they too receive the power of this loving kindness. Connect the spiritual community and be free. May our loving kindness know no bounds. And provide comfort, guidance, and security to all beings, wherever this life. Just allowing yourself to rest and relax any effort now. Just allowing yourself to be held in the beautiful, loving support of spiritual friends throughout this world. Forces much more powerful than any of us can comprehend. Just allow yourself to be held.
So gently connecting with any feelings in your body or mind. The pleasant, relaxed, maybe soft. Bringing the metta back in, back home. And recognizing you're always connected to all other beings on this path that you can tap into for support. And spread your own metta to all those who are lost, who are in need. Just staying present to your own heart, trusting the goodness within and allowing this blessing to soak right through. Sabe sata, sabe pana, sabe buta, sabe pogala, sabe ata bawa. Pariyapana Sabahiti Ho Sabepoisa Sabe Ariya Sabe Anaviya Sabe Dewa Sabe Manusa Sabe Winiparika Awera Hontu Abya Paja Hontu Ani ga hon tu Suki atanam pari haran tu Dukha munjan tu Yada lada sampati to Maui ga chan tu Kama Saka. So if you are ready to merge and would like to smile, <laughs> you can try the three big sadhus. This is not just Ajahn Brahm style, this is Thai tradition. <laughs> Some of the monks in uh, Thailand who've, I think, since uh, passed on or passed away for good, I don't know, uh, used to have a lot of fun as well. <laughs> so there was a monk called Ajahn Singh Tong, and he used to uh, do crazy chanting. So this is a little nod to, to him. Sadhu. Sadhu, Sadhu. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> it's always nice to see Matthias like uber expressive in the Sadhus. <laughs> so nice. Excellent. So I can see lots of smiles. Hopefully you are a little bit refreshed. 
it would be nice to hear from you if you have any comments, questions or complaints. I said it would be nice to hear complaints. I'm not quite sure if that's truthful, but <laughs> it's okay. I accept it. So um, <laughs> if anybody would like to uh, say anything at all, it's your chance before I'm off. Um, and I don't know, some of you are new to this group, so it may have been, I don't know, strange or confusing or helpful. Anyway, or you can write in the chat if you prefer. If you want to uh, raise your hand, you can do that too by going to either the participants button or the little raise hand button if you want and we'll unmute you. Okay, that's nice. Grateful, peaceful, wonderful. Very peaceful, in fact, he said. Thank you for this wonderful meditation. If some of you found it wasn't wonderful, that's okay too. You can also clarify any doubts. Thank you for the meditation. Thank you for your wishes, for peaceful rains. Yay! <laughs> Certainly going on a good wave of energy, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how in the last nine months from having this little vihara, you know, it's been seven years until we had something, but now we have something. It's just, it's really become kind of this little, I don't know, what do you call it? Like a little vortex, but very peaceful vortex. It's like this kind of energy center that attracts all this goodness and people keep building it up every time they come in. And uh, even just, they walk, only have to walk through the door, you know, sometimes. But everybody contributes to that, so it's really a privilege to, to live in such a place. And I'm sure it's under the protection of the devas now, and also Manori, who's going to be popping in from time to time. Thank you so much. <laughs> Started to float and drift, yay! Me too. <laughs> Hopefully in a good way. <laughs> Feeling very peaceful. Thank you for a peaceful session. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your kindnesses. Yeah. Ah, okay. I'm reading it. Thank you. It's not just to me, to all the beautiful Anukampa family for all you've done to cultivate a kind and caring spiritual community. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Even if you haven't made it to the monastery, you've made it to the retreats, and uh, many of you have contributed from overseas, which is fantastic as well. I'm really grateful to all the donors that have sent food. Especially people who sent food on our retreat day. It's been amazing. There was someone, uh, I don't think she comes here, Shobi, she offers like a big meal on our retreat days nearly every week. And I think some of you have as well. I know Madhu has offered as well. And another person who we don't even know has offered from Singapore. They just offer from time to time it arrives, you know. It's really touching. Because um, it takes a bit of effort and a bit of fiddling around to do these things. So, yeah. It matters, it's, it's inspiring not to receive food, but to realize how much the Dhamma means to people, you know. I like to eat as well, I have to admit, it's nice to have a lunch. <laughs> but it's really, you know, to see that uh, you can feed anyone, right? But you're feeding people who hopefully practice well and then have the chance to share the Dhamma. So this is really supporting us all. Hmm, wonderful. Okay. Any last comments or thoughts? Otherwise, we could just sit for another two minutes. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, there will be lots and lots of sessions on a Sunday, every Sunday, actually, from July the 2nd. Um, usually in the evening, 7.30 to 9. But sometimes in the morning, 9 till 10.30, on a Saturday, not on a... Sorry, on a Sunday, on a Sunday, not on a Saturday, yeah? Both are on a Sunday. It's just that some of the nuns are overseas and it's really early morning for them to get up. <laughs> like it's like two in the morning or something to teach. So, um, yeah, on a Sunday, usually 7.30, other times 9 a.m. every week from the 2nd of July. Uh, and I'll be doing one more blessing chant on Wednesday evening. All being well, <laughs> for the night before I travel, so but I'll be here. Good. So let's just sit quietly for one more minute, if you have the time. 
to end this lovely session together because it's nice to sometimes not just rush off you know straight back into our busy lives so just the one minute and then we'll end Okay, so wishing you all a really wonderful summer and autumn. May the Dhamma protect you. May you protect the Dhamma. May your practice develop. May you be safe, happy and well. And uh, just keep growing in Dhamma. Don't give up even when things are tough. You know, it's all these intentions and efforts across the years that start to bear fruit. And sometimes we don't see it straight away. Sometimes we look back and we're like, oh, Two years ago, I would have really lost it in this situation, but now I only shouted. <laughs> or I only got upset for like a couple of hours. You know? So this is really quite something because most of us only reinforce um, unwholesome habits and habits that hurt us and hurt other people. But on this path, we're loosening all of that. So yeah, you can never go wrong with metta. You can never go wrong with good intentions. So, and keep being kind. And we'll see you in November, hopefully at Ajahn Brahm's retreats as well. So see you then. Take care, everybody. <laughs>